Well, g'day, Anton. Always, always good to see your face. And, um, mate, we wanted to have a chat to you today because you've really turned your life upside down to move to the Goldie, live in that community, just do your life, but sort of love and reach out to the, the people in your actual world. And I know you've got a few tools and a few thoughts on this, a few stories. Mm. Uh, a short time we've got today. Mate, if you could share away, that would be awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Carl. It's good to, good to see you and good to just connect with you guys again. And we are missing our family back there at Catalyst. Um, but yeah, as you said, that's what we've done. We've decided to move down here, feel led by God to reach into this community. And um, we do have a few tools. There's one tool that I want to just have a look at today that has really been helpful in us framing our life around some key principles and priorities. And that one is called uh, the Daisy Chain. It's called the Daisy Chain. And you're gonna uh, draw it for me, I believe, Carl. And I'm gonna just go through some of the stages. The tool really is simply about us having a look at where we spend our time in the community. You know, church is just one part of the community that we exist in and we all spend time in different places you know and so what this does is it allows us to look at the different places where we're spending time it helps us to um, identify those places identify people in those places and then we can begin to pray for people in those places and pray for god's peace and opportunity and then it helps us to uh, connect with the Holy Spirit, because here's the truth, the Holy Spirit is already at work in the lives of people around you. And um, you know, that's why you're there. That's why he has you in those places so that we can love them, pray for them, care them, care for them, share with them and connect them to Jesus. That's, that's really the mission. That's the goal. And that's our hope. And so, yeah, what we have here is a, a daisy-ish kind of thing. And uh, <laughs> in the middle, that's me. So this is me. And this is just, again, it's a map for mapping out my social networks and where I find uh, that I spend my time. And so, you know, thinking through, hey, where do I go during the week? What do I do? Well, here's some of the places where I go. One of those would be the gym. You know, I'm at the gym every day in that community um, with uh you know, just making relationships, right? I, I go to the school. I'm always dropping the kids off at school. There's other events that happen at school. Then we've got, um, you know, the kids do sports. So we've got soccer, which is a whole new bunch of people there. And um, one of the boys does karate. Um, so I put that down as well. And, um, you know, there's other places. Maybe you go to the coffee shop every week, the same coffee shop. You know, that's a place that you would write down. And, um, you know, it might be helpful just to keep one blank at the moment, just for like, hey, you know, something that might come up, a random place or a stranger or something, you know, so just keeping one blank. And if you've got more places, then simply just you can add some more petals around the, uh, the other ones, you know, um, so that you can, yeah, just simply adding them like that. And so in the gym, when I go to the gym, who do I know? Who do I know by name? You know, not who can I look at every week and I recognize them, but who do I know by name? And so the first step is really just writing down some names, trying to get a couple of names in each of these pedals. So for me in the gym, there's, um, there's a couple of people. It's like, you know, uh, there's a guy called Travon. There's a guy called Lewis, you know, um, I've got a bunch of people who I'm actively sort of praying with, you know, at the, um, at soccer, there's, uh, there's Mark and Emily. Um, and at karate, there's, there's Matt and Emily. And, you know, you, you might have a lot more names. So, you know, for the sake of this, uh, I won't put them all down, but I've got a bunch of names in each of these categories. And in some, I've only got a few. And so the idea is to get those names down. And, you know, we want to be so praying, firstly, for places, you know. So here's the places that I'm praying for, that I, I, I visit this daily if I can to just be praying over these places and then I'm praying for these people you know who are these people and it's like God you know how can I love them how can I care for them how can I you know what is what is their needs right now and so with that in mind and with me praying and that then I'm, I'm really listening to them when I go there and I'm hearing things and I'm looking for those opportunities to be you know Jesus and uh, and to bring his kingdom in those places you know, the other thing that it helps us to do is just be intentional in, um, in praying for peace in those places. You know, that's one thing that we have is, is peace. Jesus said, peace 
I give you peace, I leave you. And so we want to pray for King, his kingdom's peace to be in those spaces. So we're praying for people, we're praying for places. And those people that we're looking to identify, initially, you just want to write down who are the people that you know, write their names down. But then you want to come back to it and think, okay, who are the people that actually like me, listen to me and don't know Jesus, you know? And then we're praying and asking, God, how can I love? How can I pray? How can I share? How can I connect these people to you? And, you know, it's at all different places and all different um, phases. You know, some people are ready to hear a gospel message. Some people have never uh, heard, uh, you know, anything about Jesus. Some have, and they're a bit reluctant. So, you know, you just want to be really leaning into the Holy Spirit and his leading. And, um, but it is sharing your life with them, you know, looking for opportunities to pray with and for them, um, you know, and I think a big thing is your story. So, you know, use your story. We all have a story. If we've come to faith, we all have a story. And then it's God's story. He's got a story. You know, how do we share that succinctly with people? How do we just drop little, you know, just little bits of truth here and there? You know, so my story, God's story, so that it connects with their story in their world. You know, we don't want to be using things and terms and stuff that's just well beyond where everyday people are at. So we try to keep it real, authentic, quick, um, but genuine as well. Yeah. So that's really.